everyone. Welcome to another episode of Impact Today. We are Mark and Victoria Bowling, evangelists and teachers of the Word of God. We are so happy that you decided to join us today. We are going to dive in to some good teaching from the Word of God today that's going to make an impact in your life for the better, for the good, because it's God's Word, and God's Word is good. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the teaching today, though, Mark, you have some testimonies for us? Yes. Every week we receive phone calls to one of our uh, host stations, and um, on this particular week, um, 198 people called in saying they were healed by the power of God. One lady had an issue in her eyes. She wasn't able to see properly, and Jesus healed her. Amen. Uh, The following week, 127 people called saying they were healed by the power of God. A girl called with an issue of depression. Mm. She was healed, and she called to testify that she had been set free. You know, that's wonderful and amazing. If you've ever suffered with depression and Mm -hmm. you hear a testimony like that, it really causes you to rejoice. But a lot of times depression is an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. But notice she was healed. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, Jesus healed people who were oppressed by the devil. And actually what we're going to be talking about today We're actually continuing with this series on developing your inward person, Mm -hmm. developing your spiritual life. But the passage of scripture we're going to spend the most time on today, if you will put it into practice, it will prevent you from becoming depressed and having a depressed life. Because depression, often there's a root cause and often it is anxiety Anxiety. and worry, okay? Okay. So sometimes people get depressed and they just want you to pray their depression away and that can happen and then it leaves. But if you don't do what we're going to talk about today, it'll just come back. All right. So we're talking about developing the spiritual life. Remember, we're talking about four ways you can develop your inward man, your inward person. Number one, meditate every day, day and night, in God's Word. I would encourage you, start out with 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes in the day, 10 minutes at night. Do it. Amen. Number two, do the Word. Number three, or or practice the Word. Number three, pray in tongues every day. And number four, uh, instantly obey the voice of your human spirit which is really your conscience. If you'll do those four things every day, the day will come. You'll be very strong in your spirit and God will be able to guide you even in the small affairs of life. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to get right into Philippians chapter 4. Practicing the word. We're going to be doers of the word. Yeah, and here is one example, a passage of scripture that you can hear, listen to, and then begin to practice not six days a week, but seven days a week. And practice immediately. You can go away from here and start doing it right away. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, we taught on this in the last episode. Yeah. Um, But let's just say right off the bat, what we can do is start talking to God about our anxious heart. Amen. Talking to God about the things that are making us anxious. Amen. Talk to Him. Yeah. Instead of the people around us, instead of a dialogue in your mind mm-hmm. going around and around and around, stop and make your requests known to God. Amen. With thanksgiving. Thanksgiving because you believe He heard you. Yeah. And you believe He's working it out. Amen. He's answering your request. And then what happens? The peace of God 
sur that which surpasses all understanding. That means it doesn't really make sense that you would have peace in the mm -hmm. situation, but it comes in and it guards your heart and mind. It stands uh, like a soldier, mm -hmm. garrisons yeah. your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. That will keep you stable through the storms of life. Goes on to say, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. What things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, if there's vir virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy. Yeah. Listen to uh, verse 8 in the New Living Translation. Fix your thoughts. Now, if God tells you to fix your thoughts, this is God talking to us, right? The Bible is God speaking to you. And this is what he says. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right, pure, lovely, admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Now, you cannot control thoughts that come to your mind as far as you can't stop them from coming to your mind but you can stop them from staying in your mind. Mm -hmm. There's the key. You know, our spiritual father said this many years ago as it's an exaggerated illustration, but it's true. You can't stop the birds from flying over your head, right? They're gonna fly over your head, mm -hmm. but you can't stop them from building a nest in your hair. That's such a good illustration of what you're trying to say. Yes. Thoughts can come and they may even persist. Yes. But if we don't entertain them, we entertain them by grabbing a hold of them. And speaking them And too. actually speaking them out of our mouths, but just um, letting our mind rest around these thoughts. You know, recently, the Lord kind of brought to my attention some negative thoughts that I had been dwelling on, I started to notice that I would say out of my mouth on too much of a regular basis, much too often, I'm so, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. I'm so annoyed. I'm, that's annoying. I, I noticed I was saying that a lot out of my mouth, not about the same thing over and over again, about many different little things that I should not let annoy me. Mm -hmm. And I never noticed that I did that before, but that's along the same lines. Mm -hmm. If you give voice to that, it just brings it as a reality in your life. And then all of a sudden you are living as an annoyed person. Yeah. And that's not how God wants us to live. Yeah. So I had to stop myself and catch myself mm -hmm. and replace that thought with Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Praise God. So Amen. I want you to hear what we're saying here, really what the scripture is saying here. Mm -hmm. Remember the original text we started this whole series with, Joshua 1.8. Keep this book of the law on your lips. And that was written in the old covenant. If it was written today, it would say, keep this word of God on your lips and meditate on it day, day and, and night. night. Now notice the key. The key to controlling your thought life is the words you speak. You can, you can govern your mind by an act of your will by speaking. Your tongue is, this, is the steering wheel of your thought life. Never forget that. Your tongue is the steering wheel of your thought life. Well, and ultimately that makes it the steering wheel of your body. Yeah, that's right. Like a ship 
mm -hmm. has a rudder mm -hmm. that steers the whole ship. That's right. Well, a ship doesn't have a mind. Right. But we do. We do. And what we speak and we think, we eventually become, become and Be do. Because the scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you're always anxious and you're always fretful and you're always worried, what happens? You begin to magnify the problem. God becomes smaller in your eyes and then the devil takes advantage of that. It begins to oppress you. Yeah. And then you live in depression. Mm -hmm. You live in fear, anxiety, depression, yeah. oppression. And, and, and it literally can open the door to demon obsession and even possession, mm -hmm. if you're not careful. There are people it's true. who are literally mentally crippled and they their mind just snapped, gone. Why? It started with thoughts of fear and anxiety that they did not control, okay? But the good news is this, if you're born again, the Spirit of God lives inside of you. Yes. The power of God's inside of you. Your Father cares for you. He's on your side. He will walk through you through any storm of life. Amen. Through the waters, you'll walk through them. Through the fire, He'll walk through you. You will come out on top every time if you simply practice His Word. And in the meantime, you develop spiritually and you become stronger and stronger and stronger in faith, and your spirit will become a safe guide. Wow. This scripture has come to me the last three episodes that we uh, did, so I just want to read it. Proverbs 18, 14. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain mm. or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. Mm. We're talking about having a strong spirit. Yeah. If you have a strong spirit, you will literally make it through anything. That's right. Make it through anything. Even through sickness. Now, God doesn't want you to live in sickness. Right. But the point is, if you have a strong spirit, you will overcome in the midst of that sickness. Mm -hmm. But if your heart has been broken and you're downtrodden, and you're weak, it's worse than being sick physically. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you act on Philippians 4, 6. If God says to do this, then you can do this. Again, Hallelujah. be not anxious, be anxious for nothing. I want to read it again in the Amplified Bible. Amplified Classic, it says it like this. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything mm. but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition definite requests with thanksgiving continue to make your wants known to god there was a, a famed he's well known to people who've been in the faith for a long time but he passed away like in 1947 but there's so many books written about him, and that is Smith Wigglesworth. Mm. Many years ago, he was the guest at the home of a very, very wealthy man. Very wealthy. And in that time, Smith Wigglesworth was in dire, he was in dire financial problems, debts, and he didn't have the money to pay it back. And he was just struggling financially. But he acted on the word of God. What's that mean? He refused to be anxious about it. He refused to worry about it. Instead, he made his, his request, request known unto God with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Why? Because God is good. And number two, you believe he's heard your prayer. Yeah. And therefore you have the answer. So he's just whistling and being thankful and cheerful and joyful. The man, the wealthy man, did not know of his financial situation. And this is what the man said to Brother Smith. I would give all the money in the world. Now, this guy was very wealthy. 
I would give all the money in the world, everything I own, I would give it if I could just have that joy and that peace that you have. Mm. And Brother Smith says, well, let me tell you the secret. So Smith told him the scripture, be not anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Did you know this? Brother Smith didn't mention one thing about his financial situation to the man. If he would have even hinted that he was going to The man would have helped him. The man would have given him mm -hmm. a bunch of money to help him out of his problem. But he didn't say a word to him because his trust was in God. Hallelujah. He knew that God had already taken care of the problem, that God would provide for him, and therefore he was joyful. He was rejoicing, refusing to worry, and giving all his thanks to the Lord because he knew the problem was already solved before he experienced it. My friend, that is faith, and you can live in that kind of faith. Amen. Amen. If you will be a doer of the word of God, God will bless you and your spirit will become stronger and you will be victorious in every area of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But it all begins, my friend, by hearing and receiving the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. You know, to have eternal life and make it into heaven, we have to have a perfect A plus 100% report card. Amen. And the problem is none of us do because the Bible says we've all sinned mm -hmm. and fallen short of the glory of God. So God made it possible to have all our sins washed away by sending his son, Jesus, his holy, perfect, only begotten son, Jesus. He came to this world. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned once, even though he was tempted. He also demonstrated the love of the father by healing the sick, right? Mm -hmm. and, and raising the dead. Well, then he went to the cross for you, Amen. for me. He was punished for your sin. For my sin, he died and went to hell and took the punishment that we deserved. And then after three days, when the father looked down and he said, that's enough, the debt has been paid, God raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand Hallelujah. in heavenly places. Amen. And now this gift of eternal life is offered to you and to me. How do we receive it? We receive it by acknowledging Jesus' Lordship, calling on Him, making Him Lord of our lives, turning our back on sin in the world and receiving Him as our Lord and Savior. We are born again Amen. and we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. If you wanna do that right now, close your eyes, lift your hands and pray this prayer after me say dear god in heaven dear god in heaven i know i'm a sinner i know i'm a sinner and i need a savior and i need a savior jesus christ is your only son jesus christ is your only son i believe he is lord of all i believe he is lord of all i believe all. he died for my sin i believe he died for my sin jesus i call on your name jesus i call on your name i make you lord of my life i make you lord of my life i repent of my sin i repent of my sin come into my heart come into my heart wash me wash me cleanse me, cleanse me. change me me. Change me. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For saving me. For saving me. Thank you that I am now your child. I thank you, I am now your child. In Jesus' name, In Jesus amen. Name. amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen to what the scripture says. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart God is raising from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. It is impossible for God to lie. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just did that. You believe he died for you. Yes. He rose again. You confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord. According to the scripture, the promise of God, you are saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your sins are forgiven, and you can rest assured in that. Amen. Amen. I just heard, I think it was two days ago, doesn't matter what you think you are. It matters what God says you are. Mm. 
Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Yes. God says you're saved. I believe it. You believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to encourage you to call the number on your screen if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your testimony. It's very important. It's also good for you. It's good for your faith to tell somebody else what God has done in your life. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, right now, just put your hand on the part of your body that's sick. Lord, I thank you for your mighty power, the great power of the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of me and in Victoria. He rests upon us. And now I thank you he is filling their homes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And the lame shall walk. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I thank you. The lame walk. The deaf hear. The mute speak. The blind see. Tumors disappear. Internal organs are healed. Every sickness and disease is healed. In Jesus' name. We believe we have received, Father. And we thank you for your mighty power. Flowing like a river through the homes. Hallelujah. Right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. God is touching people now, healing people now. Receive your miracle right now in Jesus' name. And please call the number on your screen. Let us know what God's doing in your life. Thank you for joining us today. We love you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, friends. We are very thrilled to offer this book that's now available that I've written. It's been a book that's been in my heart for many years now. It's called A Strong Foundation in Christ, Living a Purposeful and Successful Life from Now into Eternity. It covers in detail the six foundational doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ that's listed in Hebrews chapter six. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. But we go into detail about each doctrine. It will prove to be a blessing in your life if you read it and really put it into practice. It has more than 400 pages, but it is fast, easy reading. Unless you look up all the verses, it can be a book where you just want to read as you're laying in bed or if you want to sit down at a desk and really study it it will prove to be a blessing to you so that you can have a strong foundation under your feet in your walk with god buy the book today For the last three years, this child has been converted every day through every one hour. When did you do that? You could identify through the injuries here. These are all wounds from falling up constantly. This is even up to last Sunday. We yeah. have been continuing. Yeah. Only the thing is stopped on Monday. Throughout the day, all the days. Yeah, you could see. Wow. Wow. I could yum to then you cook then but then you want to go and they could be buying, could be here to do. Every point of high joint, you could see there is a lot of wood. And woman kill I weapon because you have a king who have a good they have sold a lot of cows. To follow up the treatment. But all these cows have been sold for nothing. Every day they are coming and 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 they are they are coming and 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 they are coming this is beautiful. God is good. Amen. Amen. Jesus is wonderful. It pays to serve Jesus.
Hello, friends. We have a wonderful, powerful miracle testimony we'd like to share with you. We were ministering on the street outside. Someone was preaching the word, and there was a lady there listening. She was inspired to come up for prayer at the end and have hands laid on her. What had happened was 11 years before that, she fell from a second story balcony and hit the ground. And as a result, she fractured her spine and had to have surgery. Um, she wasn't paralyzed, but she had to have surgery, you had to get a rod put in her back and some screws put in her back. And um, since that time, she was not able to jump and she was not able to stand on one foot in balance. So uh, we laid hands on her, we prayed in the name of Jesus and right there on the street in front of everyone, she started to jump up and down and stand on one foot completely healed by the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And what God did for her, He will do for you because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He heals you because He loves you and He paid the ultimate price for your deliverance.